Thank you for listening. That gets my goat. Okay, okay we're going to do one more real quick. Uh, Dupo Remo, we went and saw just the other day that Real Steel movie. Yeah, already on TV, already in the bargain bin by the yeah, time Yeah, you this can hits. already get it for five bucks in the Walmart bargain bin now, but we saw it just the other day. It was interesting because I swore up and down to you when that movie came out, the trailer came out, and you kept saying, wow, you know, the trailer looked really good. It was really interesting. They had this whole dynamic of, you know, the father and the son and how he's got to earn the love of his son and they do this together and it's all like this you stuff. You could smell Spielberg all over that trailer and you're like, uh... And yeah, no. I was just like, okay, I'm sorry, but there's no way you'll get me to that film. That just sounds like the dumbest movie ever. I mean, seriously, robot boxing and you're like, I don't understand why this concept would turn you off. It doesn't make any sense. That's stupid. And then, you know, the movie came out and it got great reviews from all sorts of people. That guy, Movie Bob, or whatever his name is, that you put a lot of stock in his opinion. And, you know, you're like, yeah, this guy, when he likes something, it tends to be something that I would like. And I'm still just like... <sighs> Robot boxing. That sounds like the dumbest thing ever. You know, I saw a movie once when I was in high school that was called Robot Jocks with an X. I used to, I, you know, we would go to the video store. Me and my girlfriend would rent videos fairly often. And we would go to the same video store again and again and again. And every time we'd see that movie, we were like, oh, come on. Let's get Robot Jocks. It's going to be awesome. And she was just always like, roll her eyes. We're not getting Robot Jocks. Leave me alone. You're not getting any now. But then one day, it was leap year. Yeah, then one day it was leap year. It was time to celebrate and live it up. Actually, I think it was my birthday, and she's just like, okay. so like, I'll give you anything you want. And you're like, you know what I want? What? Robot jocks. <laughs> Ooh, whoops, I can't stand. So yeah, we actually, she like made me dinner and all this stuff, and then she rented robot jocks for us to watch. And yet, that movie sucked. <laughs> it was awful. And just in general, the idea was just stupid. It was like, we've given up war, and now to solve disagreements, each nation has a giant robot. And when we have a problem, they go and fight in the ring, and whoever wins is like the person who won the war. And it was, all, and it was boring for one. It was dumb. It was, you know, just the idea was ridiculous. And when I saw... Brockham Sockham Robots, the Real Steel movie. I just thought it's like robot jocks all over again. There's no way I will see that movie. Stupid. But you know what robot jocks was missing? Tons of CG. Yeah, I guess there's that. <laughs> it had tons of uh, little models instead. Hey, let me interrupt, though. The thing that Movie Bob said in his review that made me want to see it, because I didn't see it when it first came out, but he said that it was much better made than it had any right to be. You know, for such a stupid concept, they seem to actually care about making a good movie out of it. And I was like, oh, OK, well, that makes me want to see it because, you know, the robot boxing thing, essentially the movie is like a remake of over the top. But instead of arm wrestling, it's robot boxing. Am I wrong? You, I guess you could say that. But oh, th this movie is way better than over the top was. <laughs> It's weird because, you know, like I said, I did not want to see this movie. And when we went to see the movie, we didn't go to see Real Steel. We went and we were like, okay, we're going to watch Tower Heist. And we got there 15, 20 minutes before Tower Heist started and it was sold out. It happens to be like right next to the college campus, this movie theater. And on a Friday night, there's just a lot of folks going out on dates and whatnot. And so... You run into that problem sometimes. And so we were screwed. I was like, oh, great. And I tried to get you to see Immortals. And you're like, nah, I'm not interested in Immortals. And you're like, oh, I'll see, see Real Steel again. And I was, you want to see it again? Why don't we see Immortals that you haven't seen yet? <laughs> I and know. I haven't seen. And we could both see something new that way. And you're like, eh, I'm not really interested. And so I was like, all right, well, people said it was good. I guess I'll watch Real Steel. And I still was expecting to be rolling my eyes through this movie despite everybody's uh, recommendations but it was really good i have to eat my words now and just say i was wrong i was totally wrong about that movie if you haven't seen it 
go and see it. It's good. It's like a Rocky film. It's, it's, it is kind of a remake of Rocky. It even has the same ending as Rocky. Yeah, that's true. But uh, what I noticed watching it the second time was I, I could feel Steven Spielberg's shadow on that film. And I remember, I think he bought the rights to Transformers like five years ago, 10 years ago, however long it was. Or, or he signed on to executive produce a Transformers movie. But his angle was, I want to make a movie that's a boy and his car, you know, and he gets a friendship with his car and they become really close and they fight side by side and the car is injured and he nurses it back to health. And that's the movie I want to make. And I was like, huh, wow, that, that sounds really good. I honestly don't remember if the 2007 Transformers had that in it at all. Maybe it had something in it, but I mean, it's not like Spielberg made that movie, but his name's on it. So he's got to be held responsible for a few years in purgatory, at least. But in this one, I felt like that's the movie he wanted to make with the frickin Transformers premise where it was a boy and his robot. I mean, the boy bonds with the robot long before he ever bonds with his dad. Yeah. And I just uh, I liked the way that the kid interacted. And I, I agree. It's not a great premise, and, and, and I agree that the ad campaign, except for that one trailer that focused on the kid, was all about CG and all about punching and all about a hip-hop soundtrack and stuff, and it looked like it would be a turd. Yeah, that was the whole thing. I was just sure it was going to be crap, and it turns out that, like you've said dozens of times on our show, if somebody cares about something enough, they can take something like Robots Boxing and turn that into a movie that, that is worth seeing, that is good, that you'll want to see, that you'll recommend to other people. And yeah, this is definitely one of those. I already recommended it to my parents, you know, and the good thing about it is my parents will go and see it because it's a good family film. My parents are kind of that way. They, they won't see anything dirty or they raunchy. They won't see Girl or, with the Dragon Tattoo. Yeah, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo they're not going to be going to. But this movie, I can say, hey, go see that and you'll enjoy it. You will enjoy it. Not just a person would enjoy it, but you in particular will enjoy it because it's good and yeah, it's it's got that as well. You can take your kids to it or whatever. And I don't know, I was just really impressed with it. Been a while since I've gone to see a movie and been, you know, that completely wrong. Usually I, I'll go thinking, yeah, that's going to suck. And it does. Or I think maybe this will be good and it sucks. But you, it's not the other way around. Very, very seldom do I go thinking, boy, this is going to suck. What a waste of two hours. And it turns out to be a great experience. So, Well, part of it was Hugh Jackman. I, I think yeah, he's, he's just a totally likable, watchable, believable guy. Yeah, I really like him. And this is something that I wanted to talk about in an episode a little while ago. In fact, let's save it for tomorrow. Well, we'll talk about Hugh Jackman tomorrow. Is that cool? Sure. Okay. Dupo Rimo. What's it called? Dupo Rimo. Gosh. One of these days, folks. There's no writing involved. Just recording. Bye. See you. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. This show is lame. Is lame as Rich Outfield? No, not that lame.